And then we will apply, meaning use this for something other than just practicing the derivative. All right, so in the case of example two, you are asked to take the second derivative. So when we have something like this, um, we'll take the first derivative, which would be dy dx, is equal to your outside is what? What's the derivative of the outside? Okay, negative sine of 3x cubed. Then we're going to take the derivative of the inside. Okay, so this is times 9x squared. All right, so I'm actually going to rewrite this and put this in front. Negative 9x squared sine of 3x cubed. Okay, so we have our two terms here. Does everybody see them? Okay, we've got this one right here. We've got this one right here. So we need to use the product rule, okay, to get the second derivative. So I need to create this table. <clears throat> We've got f is equal to negative 9x squared, and g is equal to the sine of the quantity of 3x cubed. Everybody okay with that? Okay, so let's find f prime and g prime. What's f prime? That's a nice quick one. Perfect, thank you. g prime requires the chain rule, right? So we'll start with the outside, so that gives us what? Cosine of 3x cubed times 9x squared. Everyone see that? So I'm just going to write it as 9x squared cosine 3x cubed. So this is the g prime that I'm going to use. I'm going to use this one right here. They are the same. I just rewrote it. Okay, you guys ready? Second derivative. Second derivative notation right here is equal to, so we've got f prime times g, which is negative 18x sine of 3x cubed. And before I write a plus, I need to look. I've got f times g prime. So this is actually going to become negative, right? More specifically, negative what? 81x to the fourth, yeah. And then I've got my cosine 3x cubed. Okay, I can't, uh, I guess I could factor out something, but is it really going to help me? No. I would just leave it. You're done. Okay, questions on chain rule? Yep. Would you take the derivative of 3x too? 3x also? Where, here? Or where? Because there's... Uh, first one, do idea. Would I take the derivative? Like three, so uh, here we did. Three, so I, I split like this up. Times, no, only twice. Because this here is like C f of x in terms of um, definitions of the derivative. So this is just a coefficient. This 3 is a coefficient. It's not a product rule. No. You could do it as a product, but what's the derivative of 3? Zero. So it'll work. I mean, I can show you. Like if you take 3x cubed and I say that this is f and this is g, right? So if I do it like this, I say f is equal to 3, g is equal to x cubed. So then f prime is equal to 0, g prime is 3x squared, right? It's going to go away. So that's why um, when you have co that's why that coefficient rule works, the c f of c, because and it's going to be the same for when you have a quotient where it's like one over or two over something. It's not really worth your time to use a quotient rule because that numerator is going to go away. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. How did you get 81? Uh, when you take f g prime. So see the coefficient here. Oh, you just know. Yep. Mm -hmm. Any other questions before I move on? Yep. So we should. Um, like you multiply the nines out. Yes. The nine we should always do that. Absolutely. Okay. Especially, too, when you have something that's easy mm -hmm. like that. Um, or if you have like a sine times a sine, definitely write it as sine squared. Because a lot of times when you're dealing with trig functions, you're going to have answers that are like this long. And it's going to be so much easier for you to fit them on the line that are designated when you're taking a test if you simplify certain things. Because sometimes stuff will go away. Okay. All right, any other questions before I move to the next problem? No? All right, so here in example three, it says find an equation for the normal line 
to the given function at that given x value. Okay, I wasn't specific because you guys can read, but find the equation for the normal line. Right there, I need to start thinking about a few things. So first of all, if I want an equation, what do I need to be thinking? What Say one more time. I didn't hear you. Point slope, yes. Y minus Y sub 1 is equal to M times X minus X sub 1. Okay? Then I have this term here, which we actually reviewed really quick at the beginning, a normal line. Okay, what is that hinting me that I, hinting to me? Perpendicular, opposite reciprocal. So when I find the slope, I need to take the opposite reciprocal. And I'm, so I'm looking for the perpendicular slope. Okay, it's a lot of abbreviations up there. Take the opposite reciprocal, which is the perpendicular slope. That's what all that shorthand means, just FYI. Okay? Five minutes. Okay, so here it says find the equation uh, for the normal line. And we are given the function and we are given the value. So if we have point slope, okay, uh, I need a point. Do I have the point? Well, I have half, right? So how do I find the other half? Put the x value in. We are specific, right? What are we avoiding? It. it. Awesome. Okay. So what we have here is y is equal to, and I'm going to rewrite this just a little bit, 3 cotangent of pi over 4, and this is going to be to the fourth power. Okay. I love pi over 4, and this is why. What's the tangent of pi over 4? So what's the cotangent of pi over 4? Oh. So what's 1 to the fourth power? One. What's 1 times 3? Three. Yeah, it's 3. Everybody usually says 1. Okay, so that means y is equal to 3. So we have the point pi over 4, 3. This is important. So the only thing I'm missing now is the perpendicular slope. How do we find the slope? Ah, I have to take the derivative because they are equivalent, right? The slope is a derivative. The derivative is a slope. Check? Mm -hmm. Check. All right. So I'm going to rewrite this before I take the derivative. Y is equal to 3 cotangent of x to the fourth power. This is my layer. Describe or classify that 3 for me, please. Coefficient. What do we do with coefficients when we're taking the derivative? You just leave them alone. You're going to multiply them maybe later if we can, but just leave them alone. You do not take the derivative of them, right? Okay, so that means I have a plane or peanut with a cotangent. Plane. plane. Okay, so we've got the derivative. Y prime is equal to, I'm going to leave this 3 right here, times this 4 comes down in front. I know you can multiply that in your head, but I'm just showing you where everything comes from. This is cotangent of X to the third power. What is the derivative? of the cotangent. Look back if you have to. Somebody look on their paper. It's definitely negative. Cosecant squared. Woo! Okay, we got it, finally. Okay, let's clean this up just a little bit. So 3 times 4 is 12, and then this negative, can I put it with the coefficient? Absolutely. So we have y prime is equal to negative 12 cotangent of x cubed cosecant of x squared. And I'm just writing it like this because now don't we want to evaluate at a specific x value? Why? What are we doing? I forget. What is the point in this? Oh, the slope. Oh, this helps me find the slope. Okay. So we have y prime of what value? Pi over 4. Okay, so we've got negative 12, cotangent of pi over 4, and whatever we get, we're going to cube that. Then we've got cosecant of pi over 4, and we're going to square that. Okay, didn't we already figure out cotangent of pi over 4? It's 1, cubed is 1. So basically, we still have negative 12 times 1, right? Okay, cosecant. Uh, I know sine. Are they related? Okay, so cose uh, bleh. sine of pi over 4 is... Square root of 2 over 2. So that means the cosecant is <coughs> square root of 2 once you simplify. What happens when you square it? 2. Okay, so 
the slope is negative 24, but am I using that slope? No. no, because now I need to convert this to the perpendicular because I want the normal line. So here, if I have the curve that looks like this, right? I want this one. Does that make sense? Okay, there's a tangent line here, but I want this one. Pretend perpendicular. I'm not measuring, but you get the idea. You see what I'm saying? Okay, that's the worst curve ever, but it's about as good as I can get right now. All right, so what's my perpendicular slope? 1 over 24. Okay, do I have everything I need to write this equation? After all that work, it should be worth it, right? No, opposite reciprocal. Remember? Because this is negative 24, opposite is positive. All right, we've got y minus 3 is equal to 1 over 24 times x minus pi over 4. Do I need to do anything else to that? No. Is that my answer? Yes. Thank goodness. Done. <laughs> Questions? Yeah? But this is, I mean, it's the same procedure every single time. Same. And look at how, like, Linear and consecutive that work is so nice, I wish right? I could. I, I just go from here to here. You need to. Oh, that's called sprinkler. That's bad. Sprinkler. That's bad. Sprinkler work. I'm like, mm, yeah, nope. I, I can't read it. I'm the king of let me let me give you some advice. Always label. Like when you take the derivative, write f prime of x, so I know what I'm looking at. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of scribble scrabble. Just saying. Okay. Tables, they, meaning the people who are smarter than, at least me, I can't classify anybody else, uh, and they write these tests or they write these questions, love tables. Why? It really gives you a bunch of information. You just have to pull from it what you need. So um, we're going to take a look at A. We want to find the derivative of capital F, or basically the slope of function capital F at 1, given the function is F of G of X. Literally, when we take the derivative of this, it's the definition of the chain rule because f prime of x is equal to little f prime of g of x, g prime of x. If you go back and look at the definition for the chain rule on the previous page, it looks just like this. And it's just because of the notation, whatever we use to define our two functions. Now we want to find out what f prime of 1 is. So it's f prime of g of 1. I'm just plugging in 1 wherever I see an x. Okay, now we need to go through and look at the table. So I need to evaluate or plug in what g of 1 is. So what I have here is f prime of, what's g of 1? Four. It's 4. So I'm going to put a 4 here. Guys, do not try to do this in your head. I know you're not doing a whole lot of calculations or computations, but if you make a mistake, I can't see where you made it if you don't write down what you're doing. Please. G prime of 1. So here we are, G prime, what is that? 5. Okay. Now, F prime of 4. It's right here. 8 times 5. So what that means is capital F prime of 1 is 40. Now, sometimes what happens is, and I'm just telling you, g of 1, someone looks at it by mistake. They look at g prime of 1, they say 5. f prime of 5, as soon as you go to the table, there's no 5, so you made a mistake somewhere. So that's where these tables can be good. It sort of leads you to, oh, crap, I made a mistake. Let me go back and fix it. Make sense? All right. Uh, B, C, or D? Pick one. Everybody wants D. That's fine. I'll do D. Uh, k of x. So we want k prime. What's the uh, derivative of the square root of x? One over yep, 1 over 2 square root of x. Worth memorizing, right? Plus composite function. So this is going to be g prime of x squared times what? 2x. Yes, good. Okay? And they want us to evaluate k prime of 1 using the table. So I'm, I'm just going to plug it in everywhere. So we've got 1 over 2 times the square root of 1 plus g prime of 1 squared times 2 times 1. Um, just out of curiosity, what's the square root of 1? OK. Just checking. So this is what, 1 half? I can't tell you how many times somebody gives me the square root of 1 as the square root of 1 on the calculator part of a test. 
Nerves. That's what it is. I'll blame it on nerves. G prime of, this is 1, right? So I need to go back up here. G prime of 1, what is that? 5. 5, perfect. So then you've got 5 times 2. So this is what? 10.5? That's my answer. K prime of 1 is equal to. Done. Questions on using the table? Questions on using the chain rule? So far. Everybody okay? All right, let's look at the last page.